another episode of Film Speak. I'm your host, Ben. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> All right, and scene. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everybody. I hope the Christmas season isn't driving you over the edge. Today, I am joined by a special co-host, Clarissa Miller. Not only is she my spawn, but also she is head of our hair and makeup around here. <laughs> I had to come on. You're talking about Nightmare Before Christmas. If you do that, Heather's, Train Spotting, Moulin Rouge, or Lolita, then I have to be on. Something like expert testimony. I can buy that. I do know firsthand that you have watched all those very frequently. Today's episode is a bit of a switch up as we will have the band High Five Riot on, the whole band. They will be telling us about what they are up to and if we are good boys and girls, maybe they'll give us a jam. Film Speak's gonna rock today. You will never know what you'll get with us. Music and movies go together like peanut butter and chocolate. So let's get to it. Enjoy this from the band High Five Riot, and then we'll be sitting down and talking to them about what they have been doing and what they have in store for the future. Should we dance off for the fade out? It is a music theme show today. And fade. You didn't tell me I had to <laughs> dance. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Yeah. 
grabs his hand. Oh, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay, I got it. So we get for not playing the song last <laughs> week. No. 
Thank you. <laughs> That was enough, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. There you go. Is it that one? It's that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Fe <laughs> Welcome back to Film Speak. Um, as soon as I learn how to talk, it's it, it's a, a work in progress. Um, we are sitting here with my lovely daughter Clarissa, and the band High Five Riot. Hello. Thank, how you doing? Thank you guys for coming on today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. It's a I know it's a little bit of a different format, but a uh, big fan of you guys. I watch you on the internet well, and everything. Um, very excited to have you on today. Oh, thank you. We're excited as well. I guess uh, we'll, we'll start off with some basics. Is um, What have you guys been up to? Well, we had our um, CD release and our debut show on October 11th. Um, after that, we played the Grand Illumination downtown. Uh, that was fun. So. At first, we were like, oh my gosh, 12 Christmas songs. But it, <laughs> it turned out really well so um, and then yesterday actually we were at Children's Medical Center and we played for the kids there so oh how awesome yeah, is that so nice. yeah they they were so welcoming so that was fun they said that's always neat especially you know when you're when you're taking something good in the Christmas spirit you know bringing to people who are having problems and stuff you know right. it's, it's a great distraction and music um, is the universal language you know exactly, yeah there's so many people you, who can't connect with each other except for in music. You know, right. you, I find a, a lot of that. Yeah, and you see the smiles on the kids' faces. Is, that, did, that was my did you guys Did you guys dram, jam out the Christmas tunes for them, too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So. Put, a, put a, ro a little rock and roll spin on We did, on, uh, a little H5R classics. spin on them. So, ah, yeah. Dig it. <laughs> One lady asked, she was like, you guys know Jingle Bells? And out of the 12 songs, we didn't know Jingle Bells. <laughs> I was like, how do you, how do you not do that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, um, do you have any other things coming up um, in the near future? Yeah, um, actually, we are going to be playing uh, a New Year's Eve show um, with a band called Cursa Cassandra. They invited us onto that show at Therapy Cafe. And then after that, we will be producing our own show in April. Um, I, I wish I could tell you guys. The theme, because it's really cool, I'm really excited don't, about don't it. Don't give it away, just yeah. so let, let people know how they can keep track of it, yeah, though. Yeah, so uh, you can visit us on Facebook, uh, High Five Riot, the number five. <laughs> um, and www.highfiveriot.com is where you can get your merch before the show. So. And, and a, ni a nice little tie-in is uh, Chrissa Cassandra and Nicole Richter yeah. has been a guest on our show before. Oh, really? Oh. Awesome. Oh. Ah, we get film speed gets around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, how awesome is that? What, what, that's like uh, playing Kevin Bacon, Six Degrees of Separation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to, to further get into it, um, let me ask around. Um, we'll start with you since you got the microphone in your hand. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. They should never give me one of these. That's, that's <laughs> this is true. the problem. Um, what do you find are your influences? Uh, music wise, well, music wise, it's kind of hard to say because I've been playing music for a very long time. I've played everything from rock to R and B to country music, so it all kind of melts together. Um, I think a lot of my influence comes from um, some of the greater drummers of my era, which would be like Chad Sexton of Three Eleven, or um, I've always loved um, Carter Buford from Dave Matthews Band. He's crazy good. His yeah. syncopation's like off the charts. So I draw a lot of ins uh, influence from him, which is weird because I play a lot of pop music and you don't get a lot of chance to work that in, but it gives me a lot of flexibility in whatever we do. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, because uh, Dave Matthews is a jam band. Oh yeah, you, you absolutely. Never, you never hear a song the same way twice. Oh no, <laughs> definitely not. So learning the whole uh, discipline behind pop music where everything has to be like perfect all the time. Otherwise, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't work. Um, it's a very big departure from what some of the stuff that I used to do. I used to be in a uh, blues band for a very long time, and it was very jam-oriented. Um, and 
we were lucky we played the same thing the same way twice. So <laughs> this is a little different, but it's a lot more polished and ready to go, and I love everything about it. And I find that my past experiences allow me to bring something a little different to the table that you don't normally hear in pop music gives it a little bit of a different feel to it. I think that's kind of something that sets us apart and something I draw from a lot. So. Yeah. Excellent. Um, how about you, sir? Oh, my influences can be all across the chart. <laughs> you know, it, 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 uh, you know it, it's a tough question because I have such a great appreciation for so many different musical spectrums. I well, well, then I, I, I guess then um, maybe uh, who were you pretending you were at 12 years old in your underwear <laughs> standing on the bed jamming? Probably Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely Ozzy Osbourne. I started off loving uh, hard rock and metal, so I grew up as a as a metalhead, which is, is kind of funny because if you look at me now playing pop music, it's yeah. a uh, big jump. Um, you know, in a way, you know, some of our music is a, a, has a good rock feel to it, you know, but, uh, you know, for me, it's just playing. I just love to play and make music, so. You know, I, I think sometimes the best sounds from a band come from um, when, you, when you blend so many different genres <laughs> and areas and people are taking different experiences and walks of life and putting them together right. in one. Yeah. It makes, uh, I mean, I think some, you know, if you look back, you have basically one kind of music many years ago, you yeah. know, and then it evolved all the way, you know, Elvis made the big rock movement and stuff like that. I mean, it's basically people veering off their typical music spectrum, so. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, and, and rock and roll has always been kind of that edge thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. How about you, sir, going to the back row? Oh, you got the mic. <laughs> you you have the microphone Next. in your hand. Um, I I don't know. We all definitely come from different backgrounds. I started with uh, more of the punk rock scene, um, like their Descendants, you know, Sex Pistols. Yeah. I started out like that, and you know, I kind of wanted something a little bit more kind of poppy, but not really. And I kind of got into like pop punk, going back to the old school, like Blink One Eighty Two, Your Sum Forty One, and then I got into the new school pop punk. Um, you know, like the Wonder Years um, story so far. And then after that, you know, I've always had a soft spot for just regular pop music. Yeah. Um, even like your soft, like piano rock, like The Fray and post rock, like Moving Mountains and No Brother and stuff like that. Um, so this band's kind of like a mix of all of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because we do a lot of some stuff that's a little quick and a little bit heavier, and then a lot of it's really pretty and really, you know, experimental. So it's definitely nice to well it's good to push the boundaries like that yeah, you, know, for you sure. say experimental um, going outside your comfort zone mm -hmm. yes. you know and uh, trying to push and make something different really right. counts for a lot yeah for sure so I tone these boys down yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well I'm kind of because I started off um, younger I listened to classic rock which was what my parents listened to mm -hmm. in the 70s you know lots of Zeppelin <laughs> uh, early meatloaf um, stuff like that <laughs> early ACDC but mm -hmm. in the 80s I went punk, oh, yeah. you know, and that, that's what uh, I listened to. I, I was the, like the anti hair metal band guy. <laughs> 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 now, um, one more down on the end. Yeah, uh, the Beatles would definitely be my oh. biggest influence. I'm a big fan of Paul McCartney. Uh, he's my favorite bass player of all time. And I'm also a big Elvis fan. We got a lot of influence from him. He's worked with a lot of great bass players that I really respect, especially Jerry Sheff. Probably then. I also like uh, Kiss a lot. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, and aside from just the music, they're just some of the best performers yeah. I've ever seen. So I, re I really respect what they bring to their live show. Stage presence is incredible. I, uh, music wise, I don't think I liked much that they did um, before the 80s. Once they took their makeup off, I, I was kind of re repulsed by them. <laughs> um, but before then, um, Especially uh, Kiss Live <laughs> 1 and 2 were probably some of the most definitive albums from the 70s. Definitely. Um, and, and their music always played better live. You know, then when you have the studio records, didn't capture that energy, and you put on the live album, you're like, Firehouse? This is the same song? <laughs> you know? 
Then they write Folsom County Blues. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, that was Elvis. That's right. Elvis. Elvis. Before he went in the Army. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> you just disregard anything those two say. <laughs> I, I, I take it they like to mess with you about yes. that a lot. Just <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> we got on. him with that like two days ago. He was outstanding. The look on his face was bright. So hateful. He was like, <laughs> it was like. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he about walked out. <laughs> he yes. about quit, yeah. Yes. Just about. It was funny. Very funny. I was already typing a status like basis needed. And then he, <laughs> he took it a lot better than I thought he did. You know. Yeah. It was a better. See, one of my favorite basses is End Whistle. Um, from yeah, he, he's a definitely a big influence to me. I, I love The Who. Yeah. Um, but yeah before they lost uh, Keith Moon uh, there in the late 70s, they were one of the most prolific rock bands. I always say the holy trinity of Britain rock, <laughs> which would be uh, The Who, The Stones, and The Beatles. Yeah. It's tough <laughs> to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you, do you have anything you'd like to ask? I feel like you pretty much covered everything without me saying a word. I haven't, <laughs> co I haven't covered everything yet. Mm. My daughter just makes me look good. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> How? Huh? I mean, I'm literally just sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you can jump in a conversation anytime. You have a um, stellar knowledge on music also. It all came from you. I can't help that. I literally listened to what my dad listened to when he was in high school, so. Yeah, from uh, the Velvet Underground <laughs> to the Violent Femmes, The Cure, Echo and the Bunnymen, yeah. New Order, new lots order. of New Order. Yeah. Talking Heads. Yeah. Talking Heads, yeah. <laughs> See, we got, we got good taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was one of those kids in the 80s there for a short time. I had a big black mohawk, and I wore eyeliner and he black didn't have fingernail a polish. He had an afro. When the sides are shaved to the skin and it's this big, it's still an afro. It was. It was. We had a fro hawk. A fro hawk. A fro hawk. I love. I love. I love that. I had a fro hawk. Yes, I will use that from now on. I think I'm just going to grow my hair and cut it like that, just so I can say fro hawk. There you go. There you go. I'm a filmmaker. You know, I'm allowed. I'm allowed to do those like weird artist things for no reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. The I'm, still I'm still 44. <laughs> hey, my last my numbers. my last haircut I gave to myself. So. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I cut my hair yesterday. Oh, it's good. Thank yeah, you. Her, her job looks a lot better than mine did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. Bald patches in the back. Oh, it was hard yeah. times. Just do a no guard. And yeah. They just take, just take, take it, it all take off. It all off. One thing they used to have, the Floby, it was like... The like, Floby, yeah. Vacuum and then just... <laughs> it's like Wayne's World material. Uh, there. Yeah, yeah, Ni 90s infomercials. Where yeah. did they go? <laughs> I so to miss them. To 4 a.m. To 4 a.m. Where they belong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to set my alarm clock now because I, need, I think I might need a Floby. <laughs> <laughs> I think you don't, actually. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> You said you guys got uh, the concert coming up with yeah. uh, Chris and Cassandra on uh, New Year's Eve at Therapy Cafe. And you guys also had a music video yeah. Um, recently. Yeah, and she's actually, Nicole Richter, is the um, involved with the film class. Actually, a few of the students out of that class did our video at that Wright is State. Awesome. So, yeah. She's everywhere. Constantly <laughs> tying in. Yeah. yeah. did a wonderful job. I couldn't ask for anything better. And yeah. when, when is that show? Um, the, the New Year's Eve show? Oh, so it's uh, sad. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be. The end of um, let me, hold on, let me think. <laughs> um, she said that. Um, it's, um, I think it's the 30th. Like 30, 31st. Yeah, that, that would be New Year's Eve then. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, this show will be out before then, so uh, probably right, at, right before New Year's. Cool. So make sure you go see this right after you watch the show. Don't leave till until after the show, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you guys looking towards um, for, the ne for the next year? I mean, aside from... Well, um, next summer, we want to do, like, a little regional tour um, around here. And then the summer after that, we actually want to go out into the state. So we're, we're going to be looking tour. at... Yeah, we're going to be looking at, you know, places, venues to go. You know, it's outside of... Uh, Dayton. Everybody starts that way. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, That'll be fun. We're looking forward to it. So. 
I mean, I, I saw uh, I saw Pearl Jam in a bar before, really? their, before their album came wow. out. Um, so you know, it, it just you need to build build up first. Right. I think I think that's when I saw them. They were doing more of a promotional thing before mm -hmm. um, ten ten verses or verses before yeah. that came out. Um, and, and we're uh, also getting um, another EP ready. To ah, sweet. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, where can people go to purchase your EPs? Can they get those online, like off you your Facebook? or? Well, um, you can go to the www.highfiveriot.com, and there will be a little like thing with three lines. You click on that, and you go down to merchandise. It'll be right there. So it's www.highfiveriot.com. Um, look for that at the end of this. It'll be in the credits, so that you'll be able to find it easier. Uh, just to let people know, uh, g g give you some pimping. Yeah. Hey. There's also music on Reverb Nation as yes. well. So Reverb Nation. Yes. So there's many places you can be able to find these guys. Uh, there's no excuse not to. Um, I think it's really important because um, I always preach support local arts, and that just oh, uh, just doesn't include filmmakers. It's musicians, exactly. authors. Um, there's so many creative people um, doing brilliant work in the area. And uh, I, I would hate for it to be missed. Right. That's where all your mainstream people come from. You know, they started somewhere. Yeah. You know, they, they got out there and they played shows and little bars or little venues and then worked their way up. So well, my, 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 my way of looking at it, and it's how I look at it as a filmmaker, is I'm, I'm doing it because I have to. I'm not <laughs> expecting to be rich off this. Yeah. I'm not expecting to be famous. I'm doing it because there is nothing else I can do. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's just true. You know, if, if I'm doing something else, I'm thinking about film. Yes. Right. You know, and uh, if, I, if I'm going to be poor and struggling, I might as well be doing it, doing something I love. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you there never know. There is nothing I can do. There is, not, there is nothing am else. Completely useless. I, actually. I, 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 outside, <laughs> of the, outside of the film world, I pretty much am. <laughs> we all have our niche. <laughs> we all have our niche. Film, films just happen to be mine. <laughs> And you never know when, like, where the next big thing is going to come from. I, I love our city. I love everything about Ohio. I'm very much bred here. And it always astounds me how many famous people came from this area. Um, like we said, our video was actually filmed at Wright State. And um, uh, now I'm drawing a blank because I'm trying to talk about him. Um, the guy from Castaway. Uh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks has graduated from there. And he's a uh, big proponent of their film academy and he comes back every year and does a speech there and that's because he came out of this area. Rod, Rod Sterling uh, mm -hmm. was from Yellow Springs. Um, John Lithgow, John Lithgow. Uh, went to uh, Antioch College. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle oh. is yeah, Dave Chappelle. here. He's seen all over the place. I have never once seen him here and all of my friends have. I feel him. totally jealous. I've seen him at Starbucks. See, oh, everybody sees times. him. The one guy, <laughs> Meyer. I've seen him there a few times. Mm -hmm. You go to the green. He goes to the green. He's always in the funny bone. You know, I, I had a friend tell me that he was uh, in a coffee shop in Yellow Springs, and Dave Chappelle came running in and hit around the corner. I'm not and then five people <laughs> went running by, <laughs> and he's like looking, and then he went out the back door. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, for some reason, he just doesn't like the... He doesn't like yeah. the attention for some reason. Well, you, that that would be me. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I I I love doing film. I love writing. I love films, but I'm I, sure you love attention. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I I I really really I really don't care. His if, nose uh, is growing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, I've had people like walk up to me from doing this show and just be like, "Oh my God, you're that guy who talks about movies." <laughs> I am that guy. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and I, and it, that's all you know me as by. You don't have to call me Bill or whatever. All you got to do is say, that guy. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> well, thank you guys for very much for oh, coming thank on. You. Thanks for thank having you. us. <laughs> giving us a little talk about what you guys are up to and into. And uh, please stick around. We're going to talk about the Christmas classic, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, is it a Christmas classic? It is a Halloween. A little well, bit of both. Hey!
Christmas party. Thanks. Hey, I just wanted to let you know, I've been plowing your wife for like three months. Jesus. Yeah, man, I've been taking her more ways than there are fittings in Tetris. I'm going to plow your wife. That's not my wife. That's my husband. And it's cool, man, because he's down with it. Merry Christmas. What? That's hot. Oh, you think that's hot? No matter what's your faith, take the time to validate your loved ones this time of year. So from Burn Mill, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Bali Day, Diwala, Ashwala, Solstice, and anything else I possibly can't pronounce or remember. Happy Holidays! Because he's like, um, he says, spinning a fucking menorah. She's like, a dreidel. A dreidel. A dreidel. And then he's like, oh, you put some black cuts. Bateman. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. And he's like, what, Bateman? You want some fucking black cuts? And, uh, give me my marker. Look at the robo cam. Gotcha. Which one, three? Yeah, that one. The one with J on the front. What? What? And oh, welcome back to Film Speak. We're sitting here with the most excellent band, High Five Riot, about to break down the Christmas classic, Halloween classic, Thanksgiving classic, Thanksgiving holiday, holiday, <laughs> holiday classic, Nightmare Before Christmas. Thank you guys for joining us. Oh, thank, thank you for having you. us. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I love this movie. I remember back yeah. when uh, they, it was, wasn't even out yet. They were just talking about Tim Burton making a stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was already sold. It, it, was, it was like the whole, you had me at hello, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, they were using techniques that had been around for years, but doing it in such a way and with such clarity that uh, just really raised the bar. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Now, I'm going to start over here. With Clarissa, with um, 
would like your spin on Nightmare Before Christmas and what you think. I think everything about how it's done is like perfect. Like all the contrast, the different parts, the colors, like the Christmas in comparison to the um, Halloween part, like the different worlds look so different. Right. And it it's funny, but in a really dark way. And I love Danny Elfman, the score. It's yeah. so good. The Danny Elfman score. And it's, I don't know, I just, I don't think there's anything you could do to make it better. It's, hey, just it's funny you mentioned Danny Elfman. I remember when uh, he first started scoring movies. The earliest one I can think of is uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but when he first started scoring movies, I was a big Oingo Boingo fan, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, what the heck? That the lead singer of Oingo Boingo is like leaving Oingo Boingo to go do TV <laughs> scores. That's awful. But, but after after a few films, I was just like, yeah, he doesn't need to go back to Oingo Boingo. <laughs> this is so much more than what he was doing before. Right. <laughs> I just think it's visually incredible too. Like name, it's just it's so good. Yeah. It is a visually striking film. And I, I like the way that you brought up the comparisons of different worlds, like ha, um, the Christmas land, how vibrant the colors are. And then mm -hmm. Halloween, it's just Black everything couldn't be more drab. dull. Yeah. yeah. Very dark. But they love it. They love how dull everything yeah. is. Yeah. And like the way they use additives, they use like the worst words for happy things. It's, <laughs> it's funny. They're like, it's going to be so horrible. I can't wait. <laughs> Now for uh, for you guys, we'll start with you, Ashley. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually um, when she said about the two worlds, that's that's what I really like about it as well. So, um, but I'm, I'm a musician, so I, right. I listen to the music too. But, yeah, um, that's a, that's why we have you guys. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, the music, you kind of forget that it's almost playing because you're like looking at all of these like amazing things but then you're kind of like oh my goodness it fits so well every little thing like I don't know if anyone else thinks about it like um, besides you guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like how perfect the music is to what you're seeing yeah you know um, that's so like detailed and it's kind of just so perfect uh, the different style of music that like each character gets like oogie, exactly. bo oogie boogie kind of has um, Jamaican beat with uh, yeah. with a little bit of blues sound to it, right. you know, and then you got the Jack Skeleton songs, which are more dramatic. And kind of how a, the songs, like, for Jack change after he goes to the Christmas world, like, they're darker in the beginning, and then it goes to when it hits at the Christmas world, and then at everything he sings after that is more upbeat, kind right. of. I, I, I just love him calling Santa Sandy Claus. Sandy Claus. <laughs> he doesn't have claws at all. You have hands. I was talking about that earlier. Sandy Claus. And I was talking to Austin about it. And it just, it's he, so funny. Throughout almost the whole thing. Sandy Claus. Sandy, Sandy Claus. Claus. <laughs> We're going to steal Sandy Claus. <laughs> yeah. So what, what did you think of the movie then? Oh, it's great. You know, and it's... If, young older doesn't matter what age you are you know it, it's it's such a good movie it's put together well um i think that uh the music like ashley hit on is you know it's almost a musical it's almost a cartoon it's a great story you know yeah. and there's some comedy in there you yeah. know <laughs> there's some things that are a couple scares a couple scares <laughs> yeah and the, the characters the way they've done the characters the shapes the odd different shapes and the, the mayor and with the the mayor the yeah. Head. yeah he gets mad he you know or turns around he's and the next thing he's like See, I, I wish yeah. I had a head like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I had a mouth like the doctor I, I love yeah. that I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the brain yeah and the brain the, the too. brain yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that so. would be good to pop my head open so I could just scratch my brain oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it was uh, very well put together I think uh, the the writing is just exceptional. I could watch it over and over. Did you gentlemen enjoy the flick? Oh, absolutely. Um, Halloween's actually my favorite time of the year. Um, most people, it is Christmas. But something about Halloween, just being able to do something out of the ordinary and be someone you're not normally that, and maybe live that kind of life for a day or two or however long you tend to celebrate it. No. To me, I see Christmas 
encroaching like it's almost swallowed thanksgiving now and i mentioned earlier i feel like this movie is kind of like halloween fighting back and <laughs> so throughout the entire movie that's what it feels like to me because that kind of is what the movie's about you know jack skellington like wanting to do something different because he's done this forever and he, looking at halloween and going you know what i can do that or not halloween christmas going i can do that i want to do that and to me that's kind of neat um and i think the thing that sticks with me the most is like she brought up the colors, like the difference in the worlds and the movie's so well detailed that like even if you go back and just watch the Halloween part of it and even though it's dark and everything's drab and it's all kind of monochromatic and everything, there's so much detail in it and they did so much with just shading that's yeah. incredible and it's so artistic. I think the thing that speaks to me about this movie is the fact that even after all these years, it holds up so well. Um, so this movie's... I love this movie. I've seen it more times than I can count. And unfortunately, <laughs> I, I hadn't watched it in a few years since um, they did the 3D version of it. And it, I'm a very much a, like old school guy. I like 2D movies. Yeah. The 3D thing just is lost on me. So that kind of like ruined it for me when it came back and everybody yeah, I, I haven't it. I haven't seen the 3D version yet, yeah I, it just it wasn't for me um and so I kind of fell off my radar for that and then watching it again um in these past week uh just to refresh myself for this um I forgot just how much that reminded me that Halloween's awesome and even in this time of year like it's kind of cool to have something that ties that back in and makes me more thankful for this time of year and seeing something tie into it so well we mentioned the color and everything because uh jack skeleton leaves the halloween world goes to the christmas world discovers all these vibrant colors mm -hmm. um when also when he comes back in the end um sally and her patchwork look was filled mm -hmm. with colors so at the end he still finds fulfillment um, with more color mm -hmm. and vibrant world, but instead of through Christmas, it comes out through uh, oh, through yeah. Sally, mm -hmm. yeah. so. which I've always found neat. And you, sir, how did? Uh, I mean, and you can be honest if you hate the film. Uh, no, I, everybody's <laughs> singing praises. I don't want to be that guy. No, I like it. <laughs> um, I I I watched it again the other night, and I really paid attention to the music for some reason this time, and like I noticed how well. Um, it tied in with the actual story and it puts you in the mood for whatever scene it's in. I didn't realize that every movie I've yeah. ever seen, they do that really well. Um, cause I, I love John Williams. It's all old star Wars flicks. Yeah. And in, Indiana in Jones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, think about those movies too. The music is so perfect for every scene and every little bit. Um, and it really sets the mood, I think. It, with a great score, sometimes you don't even notice it's there. Right. You, you don't feel, yeah. you don't feel yeah. it, but yeah. you don't really notice. Yeah. It's just more of uh, something that you get in It's here. a mood. It builds right. yeah. a suspense, and it'll take you back down. You don't really, you think it's just like what you're seeing, you know, it's really. But it's, it's all the, the sound. pieces. Yeah, all of it, yeah. Because yeah, if, you know, the, a music can overwhelm, you know, yeah. a, a scene, if not used properly, it should be a, an accent right. more than anything. Um, everything should uh, come together like fabrics mm -hmm. of a quilt being sewn together. Now, now, now for you, sir, You're there on the end. Cake. I am such a fruitcake. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me reach my pocket. I got another metaphor in here somewhere. Um, <laughs> it's like pieces of a quilt being sewn together. It's you in here. <laughs> hey, hey, we got to have an existential moment every once in a while. <laughs> it's just fruity. It's not existential. It's just fruity. Can it be fruity and existential? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> They're exclusive. <laughs> you get it. Now, now, for you, sir, how did you? Uh, what did you think about Nightmare Before Christmas? Um, well, I was a big fan of it when I was really young, and I haven't seen it in years until um, just this past week. I watched it again, and when I was little, I think the parts that were so visually interesting is really what um, caught my attention at that time. But it was neat watching it again this past week, and I really paid more attention to the music than I ever did, and it was kind of neat seeing it again and noticing more things about it that I never really paid much attention to before. So I've noticed for all you guys, it's kind of different as you've uh, gotten older and time has passed and you've grown more into being musicians, uh, the importance that the music um, has played Absolutely. Uh, in Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th so thank you, Danny Elfman. <laughs> <laughs> His music has definitely uh, um, helped capture the sound of so many films. I mean, the first Batman, the first two Batmans,
<laughs> uh, Batman and Batman Returns. Yeah. Um, Beetlejuice. No. I mean, could, could you, Beetlejuice. yeah, <laughs> yeah, could you imagine oh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice yeah. without that Danny Elfman sound pulsing through it? <laughs> really create, really creates a difference. And, uh, there, there's a, there's a few musicians who went from being part of huge 80s bands that went on to do uh, scores, yeah. um, like uh, The Police. His, not Sting, um, guy's name is right on the tip of my tongue. He was the drummer. Stuart. Stuart Copeland. Stuart Copeland. Hey, there that is awesome, dude. For what? Yes. Hey. For what? That's what he Johnny went. That, that's Johnny what. That, that's Cash. what he went on. That's what. He, well, you know, I was a drummer. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what. After the police, that's what he went on to do was um, score films, which is kind of remarkable because you know I think um, being a part of a prolific band like that and spending you know years developing your craft. And then taking that and switching it over to bringing more emotion and dynamic death to a film is just genius. Right. Yeah. You can be done really well, you know. Uh, speaking of which, we might have to have you guys score some films for me now that we're on the subject. The ulterior motive for bringing you on the show right. it comes <laughs> out. Yeah, you're, you're laughing. He's not. Joking. Yeah, I'm not. not at all, actually, <laughs> you know, it's like we gotta. Walk us into the staging room and be like, "Here's the movie. Write something." And you <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. That'd I would be really love. Fun. I'd be all you know. Over. You know what? Um, we we will have to work on that yeah. sometime together. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got yeah. tons of projects. I got so tons of projects coming up. That'd be really fun out. to have to sit down and like for once there's like, if you think about it, every movie has, you know, music. Yeah. Now, and that'd be fun to sit down with a movie with no music and have to be the one to create that. Could, um, it's telling the story, you know, so the music, with music we express ourselves, you know, so being able to express what's going on in in the movie, yeah. I think that would be awesome. That you see, and, th and that's um, that's why I love film so much, is because it is the combination of so many different art forms. It's the combination of writing, music, acting, of uh, knowing your colors. You know, I mean, there, there's just so many different art forms that go into that one art form. That's why, um, in the past century, I think it is the modern art. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't approach it that way because all they think about is cha-ching. Right. right. You <laughs> know. Um, but but it is the modern art form, you know, from right. cave paintings 50,000 years ago. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's tr it's true <laughs> though. Yeah, yeah. Now, hold on, I gotta pay. I gotta, I gotta pay the philosophical fine. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's true. You know, it's that, that progression that goes through it. Hey, I almost sound smart. Give me some, give me give, give me my moment. Can you I can have, have this? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stick to the movies. <laughs> Gotta stick to the movies. Don't get out of the movies. You're just you're you're, you're out of your death here, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> well, aside from Nightmare uh, Before Christmas, um, start with you again, sweetheart. What are some other Christmas movies you would suggest? Here, just move your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Elf. Um, yeah, I, I I love Elf. I could watch I watch Elf all year. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I told her to ask you guys. She's like, "What questions should I ask them?" I said, "Just ask them what's their favorite color." Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like Christmas movies. <laughs> I, I mean, I love Rudolph. I, that's Rudolph, a Santa's coming. Santa, Santa Claus is coming to town. I've never seen that. No, with the Burgermeister. I heard that. Um, <laughs> actually, I looked it up on the internet. It said that um, the writer of Nightmare Before Christmas drew inspiration from Rudolph and The Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, oh sweet. Grinch. Yeah. That's another important one. Yeah. The Grinch. Yeah, yeah. The Grinch. Oh, Jim Christmas Carrey. Carol. Oh, Any yes. of them. Any of Scrooged. them. Scrooged. Scrooged is my favorite. Yeah. Scrooged I love that movie. I love uh, Bobcat Goldfade in it. <laughs> I watched He's, uh, this. He, he plays uh, Bob Cratchit that oh, he okay. fires. Oh, OK. OK, yeah. <laughs> I watched omelet. the Jim Carrey Christmas Carol this week, and that is so creepy. <laughs> it is really creepy. It's like PG. <laughs> it was done by the was same people who did Polar Express. Was that the animated well, one? I, one? Yeah, I went and saw that yeah. in the theaters. I saw it in theaters, too, and it that was, was a long time ago, and I watched it this week, and I was like, Whoa, it's a lot what? darker than I was expecting. Yeah. I was expecting creepy. like a comedy, like, oh, it's Jim Carrey, but no, that was like right creepy. when... Uh, 
Eternal Sunshine <laughs> of the Spotless Mind in 23 and all that came out. And he was love going through Eternal that phase, Sunshine I guess. Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's, that's a yeah, great that's, movie. That's one of my favorite love stories. But we're talking about Christmas movies. Yeah. So I'll, I'll hey, try, it I'll happens try not in the winter. I'll so try not to tangent. Um, Polar Express. Polar Absolutely. Express. Love... That's one of my, one yeah. of my favorites. How about, um, well, how, what's some, uh, some more favorites? Polar Express. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life is a good it's old one. It's a Wonderful one. Life is a classic. Of um, and, of course, uh, I don't know what was the one I watched last night. Anyway, uh, you know, Rudolph, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I was thinking this the other night. It's funny I already forget the name of what I watched last night. But, um, you know, I remember growing up and, like, with Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph, and all this stuff, and the way TV has changed. Yeah. Back then, it was like, oh, this Christmas show. And now I see it, and they're like, <laughs> you know, during, as they go through, and it's all boxy and stuff. It's It's... But anyway, I, um, it's, it was I really like those, you know, in, in the um, what was the other? Elf was definitely a yeah, good one. I yeah, I love Elf. Elf. That's like one of my favorites ever. That, that I had to be won over for that one because I remember it first came out. I was just like, <sighs> oh yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't, I like, didn't it. like it at all. <laughs> she she's the one who got me to make it one of my favorite films. Now it's so good. I think my my favorite adult. One would definitely be Bad Santa. Bad oh. Santa. Oh, yeah. Mine would be Friday After Next. Yeah. Friday <laughs> After Next. <laughs> Love Friday After Next. I'm solid. I don't know how I forgot to mention Christmas Story. Christmas Story. Yeah, that's like, good one. That was mine. I was it's important. Stole it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. How about you gentlemen? Sitting in the back all quiet. Um, I mean, you guys just pretty much rounded them all off. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just back here, man. Do you guys have anything? <laughs> uh, they hit all of them. You got one? Um, well, Elf is definitely one of my favorites too. Christmas stories up there. I love Christmas Vacation. Oh I, yes, I watch that so many times every Christmas season. And then I don't know if Die Hard counts or Die not. Die Hard, but Die Lethal Hard Weapon. <laughs> yes, I watch those every year. And um, as uh, was pointed out on another show, uh, Eric pointed out First Blood, the first Rambo movie, also mm -hmm. takes place at Christmas. Yeah, yep. which is a good one. Um, what, are, what are some of the other ones? Edmund Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Yes. Terminator. Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have too many of the Christmas <laughs> movies up there. Um, but yeah, it's a good. The, bishop, the Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's right. Wife. Shop Around the Corner um, are some other good ones. Um, those are old black and white ones. That's going yeah. way back. <laughs> well, you know, they have The Preacher's Wife. But um, okay. I, say, I say watch the original. Um, <laughs> Love Denzel Washington. He is not Cary Grant, though. <laughs> 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 you know, you can't trump Cary Grant. Don't, don't even try. It's like, uh, hey, I want you to put you in a role. Oh, wh what is it? Uh, you're redoing a Cary Grant role. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Not touching I it. Would <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be the curse of the dead. <laughs> yeah. I definitely love Denzel. He's, he's the man, for sure. Fabulous actor. Yes. Yeah, he's um, probably, I think, the top five of our time right now. Yeah, for One sure. One time, my friends tried to convince me that I looked like him. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's all in the complexion. <laughs> probably about a fourth of him, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> a fourth of his size, yeah, that's probably about right. <laughs> you're, you're a mini Denzel. I don't, I don't mini know. <laughs> I, I believe he has the nose ring too, right? Probably. <laughs> 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 well, thank you guys very much for coming well, on the show guys. today, sharing sharing uh, some uh, conversation about Christmas films and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's a good time here. Yeah. Excellent. And um, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, uh, as the year goes on, maybe if the show's still around, we'll be able to get you guys back on again. We'd love Definitely. To and yeah. they're going to score movies. <laughs> <laughs> Sign so, us up. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas Merry to everybody Christmas. out there. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, everything. Ramadan, I, I don't know, every, just about everything that's out of there. <laughs> yeah. Winter, it's, it's, it's just Christmas past, time, but it's, <laughs> it's sometime around there. I don't know. I, I'm trying to be equal. Festivus. Festivus. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> happy solstice. What a great show. I would like to thank my very lovely daughter for coming on and co-hosting, and a big special thank you to High Five Riot for coming on today. It was a lot of fun. The band was awesome. I'd love to talk about Nightmare Before Christmas. Funny how things work. It came out 20 years ago, a couple of years before you were born, and you were 
it was always my movie until several years ago when it started to become more your movie. It's like the passing of a film torch. It is difficult to stay at our house and not get influenced by the constant stream of good films being watched. Yeah, we do watch a lot of movies. Be sure to check FilmSpeed out on Facebook. That would be at facebook.com backslash talk films to me. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Wave, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>